Today in the news, we talk next-gen GPU performance targets, next-gen motherboards, and more. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. But first, today's sponsor, Morning Brew. In the morning, do you aimlessly go through your social media to try and find something interesting, but end up with mostly dry and sometimes boring articles? Well, in the last couple of weeks, I started using Morning Brew. No, it's not a coffee. It's a free daily newsletter I get every morning that only takes five minutes to read and catches me up on business, finance, and tech. It's pretty witty too. Last week, I found out that LinkedIn has ghostwriters that get paid more in an hour than me in two weeks. So uh, help me out here and go subscribe to Morning Brew for free by using morningbrewdaily.com slash boot sequence or by clicking the link in the description down below. It takes less than 15 seconds, so seriously, help me out here. Sign up. Let's get started with AMD. The company finally wrapped up their RX 6000 series of GPUs, or at least I hope they did, with the uh, new 50 XT series, which means that no more refreshes are coming and we can leave RDNA 2 behind on the desktop market. In the last couple of weeks though, a lot of leaks and rumors have popped up on their next generation of GPUs based on the RDNA 3 architecture, aka the RX 7000 series. And it was all over the place. It started as a chiplet-based GPU with two compute modules and one bridge, kind of like the MI250X. The new specs for the top end Navi 31 was something like two and a half gigahertz on the clock speed side of things, 15,360 stream processors, 32 gigabytes of uh, plain old GDDR6, and a 256 bit bus. But then things shifted and Navi 31 suddenly had seven different chiplets, a new kind of chiplet called the Memory Complex Die or MCD. This is basically the L3 cache, aka the Infinity Infinity cache, and uh, AMD would move it off of the compute die, which is great. The rumored specs were also slightly tweaked at that point with a lower stream processor count, but a higher clock speed. Then it was rumored that Navi 31 would not be a multi-compute die GPU, so basically one chiplet for the GPU cores and the rest of the chiplets would be for memory. Copite7Kimmy over on Twitter called it disappointing. I would obviously disagree since RDNA has a proven track record of you know, being good. Anyways, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 now, 384 megabytes of infinity cache, and yada, 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 but those are just specs, okay? It's interesting, but still, just specs. What are AMD's actual performance targets? What performance uplift are they looking for with RDNA 3? Well, at the top end, it looks like both NVIDIA and AMD have similar targets. On the green team, NVIDIA is apparently shooting for two times the performance of an RTX 3090 for their replacement, the 4090, for example. So what about AMD? Well, according to Copite over on Twitter, we're looking at two times the performance in 4K gaming and over three and a half times the performance in ray tracing. Now, why is he specifying 4K gaming? Well, according to the recent HUB video with uh, 50 games, the 6900 XT on average struggles at 4K against even an RTX 3080. So this might be an area of focus for AMD. And that's what Copite gathered from his sources. As for the three and a half times on ray tracing, that's going to be real impressive if they can actually achieve this. Right now with their 6900 XT, they're not too far behind. So tripling that performance is an insane performance boost. Then we got some info on the next generation of motherboards for AMD, the X670. Apparently there's gonna be two different models for X670, the regular one and the X670 Extreme. So what's the difference? Well, it all comes down to PCIe 5.0 lanes. The Extreme variant would have PCIe 5.0 everywhere, meaning every PCIe slot on uh, every NVMe slot, it's basically all PCIe Gen 5. When we look at the X670 normal edition, I don't know what to call it, just a non-extreme one, PCIe Gen 5 would be mandatory for either the graphics, the storage, or both of them at the same time. That's unfortunately still unclear. The rest of the lanes could still use PCIe Gen 4, which, let's be honest, is plenty fast. Hopefully AMD doesn't make us wait for a B650 model, because I don't really want to pay the premium for a X670 or X670 Extreme. Moving on to some NVIDIA news, it looks like LHR has been cracked. 
again, sort of. So what happens is LHR V2, which was the one that stood the longest, got cracked last week. It got cracked by nice hash and it is 100% unlocked. But that's for every card that came out after the 3060, but two, the 3050 and the 3080 12 gigabytes. These two models have a newer version of LHR, which is called LHR V3. And guess what? It has been unlocked up to 90%, which means that mining on these cards is becoming a little more profitable, even though the crypto market just crashed and they're probably gonna make something like a dollar a day. Then in the news, we have Gigabyte with their Project Stealth. And I've gotta be honest, this is something that I kinda of wanted to do by myself. So what they've done is essentially bring all of the power connectors that are usually on the motherboard and flip them around to the back. You have to buy the case, the GPU, and the motherboard together for everything to be compatible, but it does lend for a super clean aesthetic. I mean, look at this on their video, on their YouTube channel, they showcase how you can't see any cables from the front except maybe for the AIO cooler one. Then in, I can't quite believe this exists, we've got Gale with their Evo 5 RAM sticks. Look at this, yep, it has fans. These two little round holes are fans. Every single dim has two fans on it. I mean, I've seen memory coolers. Why couldn't you just, you know, sell the thing that clips on top that blows air onto the memory? This is not gonna cool well. And it doesn't really need cooling either. Come on, Gail. You know what? I want a pair of these just to see how loud they can be. And lastly, we have our free game check. Right now on the Epic Store, you can get Borderlands 3 for free until next Thursday. So get it fast. Borderlands doesn't need any introductions, but it's free, so go get it. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. Right here is for uh, the latest video right here is to subscribe to the channel. Stay frost, team of dudes. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.